Welcome to this video looking at the offload data transfer feature in Windows Server 2012. Offload data transfer is a mechanism that we now have which enables large file transfers to happen between LUNs within a storage area network or actually between storage area networks if they're from the same type, from the same vendor. So in this video what we're going to have a look at is actually how we can test whether offload data transfer is working because again this is a feature is actually enabled by default uh, and providing our infrastructure supports it we wouldn't necessarily know. So the first thing we're doing here is we're running the um, FLTMC space instances command which actually allows us to see the different uh, filter drivers that have been loaded. So because we're using CSV we can actually see under the uh, filter column, the first column, we actually have some CSV uh, filters. So the idea now is we want to find out whether those CSV filters are actually capable of using offload data transfer. So what we're doing is we're using the get hyphen item property command as part of HK local uh, to, to actually query the HK local machine system current control set services CSV FLT uh, file. And we're actually going to look at what the effectively the configuration status of this is. So we're going to look at a, an attribute called supported features. So we can actually see the supported features actually has a value set to free. So free effectively means that this particular driver will actually support offload data transfer. So we're copying stuff between CSV volumes, potentially if the storage supports it, the file copy can happen internally within the SAN, not having to copy the files up and down the network, and therefore minimize CPU, minimize network traffic, and even you know have some improvements on disk IO. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to actually review a different um, registry key, so the HK local machine system current control set control file system key actually shows us the feature uh, supported features object. So you can see supported features mode is actually set to zero. So that registry key effectively means that offload data transfer is turned on. So again, just to repeat, under Windows Server 2012, offload data transfer is turned on, even if the infrastructure doesn't support it. Okay, um, but we'll just fall back to normal file copy. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that to a value of one. Okay, by changing that to a value of one, we're actually turning offload data transfer off. So now from this point of view, we can actually do some testing to see how long file copies take. What we can then do is we can turn offload data transfer back on and we can do some testing again. And obviously the idea here is we can measure the performance between these two file transfers and actually understand uh, the performance improvement we're getting when using offload data transfer. So we've just gone into server manager here and we're just actually having a quick look at our disk configuration. So effectively what you can actually see is I've got three disks which actually connect me back to uh, some iSCSI storage. Now my storage doesn't support offload data transfer so we're not actually going to see a performance improvement. So this is really just showing you the procedure for testing. So if I go to one of my clustered shared volumes you can see that I've got an 8 gigabyte file and I'm just pasting that into a different clustered shared volume. So this eight gigabyte file is gonna take a little while to actually go and copy. So what we're gonna do as part of that, we're actually then gonna go into performance monitor and we're gonna start the system performance diagnostics. Now, this is going to capture all the global statistics for CPU, memory, networking, and disk, and it's gonna run for one minute. So we're just gonna hit start and we're actually gonna get that to start collecting the statistics. So if we come down to the report section, we will actually see that we're building the report. And as I say, because we're collecting data for one minute, that, that's gonna run for 60 seconds. So we'll speed that up so we can obviously then look at the report data. So having now completed, what we can actually have a look at here is the relevant performance statistics. C is the CPU utilization. So we can see the CPU utilization is set to 41%. We want to look at the network utilization, so we can actually look in the uh, network section, 
uh, network section and see what the performance was so we can see the network was a, uh, basically it seems relatively idle and then we're going to come down to the and actually look at how many disk bytes were actually uh, transmitted so we can actually see quite highly there the red line showing we've got high disk queue length and actually we're just going to make a note of the total bytes transmitted a second so that's effectively the performance level that we're achieving with offload data transfer turned off so the idea would then be is you would repeat the test but you would turn offload data transfer on and what you would expect to see is CPU utilization and the disk bytes per sector information to be dramatically lower so therefore far less load on the systems so we're just going to go back obviously to our PowerShell and we're just going to change the uh, registry key and obviously set that value back to zero that we used to turn it off we're now going to turn on offload data transfer so again just to reiterate obviously from my point of view we're not really going to see any significant change in the performance statistics because my infrastructure doesn't support offload data transfer but we sh what we should see is obviously just the process we go through for doing the testing so we can actually see offload data transfer has now been re-enabled by changing that uh, value to zero that registry key value so we can now go off and effectively run run the test again so we'll just jump back into explorer and what we'll be able to do is effectively copy the file again so we'll copy it into the same folder but obviously we'll end up sort of having a new file so, so we just sort of replace it and the copy process will kick off again so we can see the copy process again is sort of going at the same speed that it was going before so if we jump back in again we can start our performance diagnostics the same exactly the same way as we did before and we can then review the change in the performance metrics so again just to reiterate we're not going to see any significant change in the numbers because my infrastructure doesn't support offload data transfer if you wanted to test this there are it is dependent on the application supporting offload data transfer so hyper-v supports offload data transfer so when doing things like uh, storage migrations would support it um, Explorer as I've been demonstrating would actually support offload uh, data transfer so you could use Explorer also copy processes in PowerShell so the copy commands in PowerShell support offload data transfer and uh, copy commands inside the Windows command prompt so commands like xcopy support offload data transfer as well so that also means you can use utilities like robocopy because uh, they again support offload data transfer so all of those different mechanisms would be ways that um, offload data transfer could be tested as well as obviously myself doing, doing the uh, explorer based test so our even though the copy's still going, you know, our statistics have finished collecting because we're obviously only running the statistics for uh, a, a minute. And again, you know, you could see actually in the statistics list, and we'll just make a note of this in, in, in the notepad. Uh, we've actually got a similar CPU value. It's 45% now over above 41%. Um, and again, we can see the disk I.O. Uh, you know, it's again in red, actually telling us that we've got quite substantial disk I.O. So as we can see, these numbers are fairly comparative to what I had before. So as said, because my machine doesn't actually support offload data transfer, uh, we're not seeing any performance difference. But obviously what you would expect in the second scenario is for the numbers to be much, much smaller. Thank you very much for uh, watching this video. Uh, hopefully it's been useful for you and given you a way you can test to see if offload data transfer is working in your environment. Please feel free to contact me as always and follow me on Twitter. Thank you.